Welcome to the Virgo Potens YouTube channel. If you enjoy this video, I invite you to visit the Virgo Potens website at virgopotens.org. Virgo Potens has articles, traditional Latin Mass resources, transcribed sermons, prayers in English and Latin, narrated videos of the Dolorous Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ by Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, and a spiritual warfare page. I offer the content on the website and YouTube channel for free. But this work is a full-time apostolate, and your support is needed. Please prayerfully consider supporting my work by praying for me, becoming a patron of Virgo Potens on Patreon, and or by purchasing one of my ebooks. If you'd prefer to give me a one-time contribution, I suggest that you do so by buying one of my ebooks. Links to my ebooks as well as to Patreon can be found at virgopotens.org. May the Virgin Most Powerful guide and protect you. Wings of Mysticism by Tony Capo Bianco. Mysticism and theology are like golden twin pillars in the Church's priceless treasury. Mystically speaking, theology is the body while mysticism is its soul. Just as the soul animates the human body, so too does mysticism animate theology. Whereas the theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity are defined in theology, mysticism is the ripe fruit thereof. If theology were the groom, then mysticism would be its bride. Each balances the other out in a complementary fashion. While mysticism can go above and beyond the reach of theology, it is theology which sets the parameters for authentic mysticism. Studying the great theologians is as vitally important as studying the works of church-approved mystics. Theology or Mysticism Which of these are you more drawn towards? While I greatly appreciate, respect, and love theology, I have found that it is the works of the mystics that inspires me more. The works produced by the mystics motivate me to draw ever closer to the most blessed trinity. Where studying theology can at times seem cold and clinically precise, studying the mystics seems to bring the truth of theology to life. Solid and sound theology is of great importance, but to my mind, theology doesn't captivate most people in the way that the study of mysticism does. The Summa Theologiae of St. Thomas Aquinas is a magnificent work of genius, but does it inspire you in the way that the Dolores Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ by Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich does? Theology, known as the Queen of the Sciences, keeps the mystic in check. Theology gives the magisterium one of the tools to determine if the revelations of a particular church mystic is free from error and authentic. If a mystic's message contains theological error, then the message has either been misunderstood or it's simply not from God. The theology found within the church-approved writings of mystics will not be contrary to the faith. On the other hand, mysticism can be viewed as theology come to life as it demonstrates the teachings of theology in living motion. Theology studies the things of God, while mysticism is a living relationship with and contemplation of God. This is but a brief description of how mysticism and theology complement one another. What exactly is mysticism? The New Advent Online Catholic Encyclopedia informs us that, quote, Mysticism, according to its etymology, implies a relation to mystery. In philosophy, mysticism is either a religious tendency and desire of the human soul towards an intimate union with the divinity, or a system growing out of such a tendency and desire. With Christianity, the history of mysticism enters into a new period. The fathers recognized indeed the partial truth of the pagan system, but they pointed out also its fundamental errors. They made a distinction between reason and faith, philosophy and theology. They acknowledged the aspirations of the soul, but at the same time, they emphasized its essential inability to penetrate the mysteries of divine life. They taught that the vision of God is the work of grace and the reward of eternal life. In the present life, only a few souls by a special grace can reach it. Pseudo-Dionysus, in his various works, gave a systemic treatment of Christian mysticism, carefully distinguishing between rational and mystical knowledge. 
By the former, he says, we know God, not in his nature, but through the wonderful order of the universe, which is a participation of the divine ideas. There is, however, he adds, a more perfect knowledge of God possible in this life, beyond the attainments of reason, even enlightened by faith, through which the soul contemplates directly the mysteries of divine light. The contemplation in the present life is possible only to a few privileged souls through a very special grace of God. It is the theosis. End quote. The fact is that from the fathers of the church to the doctors of the church, Holy Mother Church has always and constantly taught that the gift of extraordinary mystical phenomena is exceedingly rare. Amongst the rarefied air of the apostles, it seems that only one, St. John, was a bona fide mystic blessed with extraordinary mystical experiences. St. John the Evangelist was both a theologian and a mystic. This blessed combination is even more rare. Two doctors of the church also shared these unique blessings. St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Bonaventure, who were best friends, were brilliant theologians, and the Lord also lavished them with remarkable mystical insights. So, if someone casually tells you that they are a mystic with exceptional experiences and gifts, be skeptical, because the odds are that they do not possess such supernatural gifts. Genuinely exceptional mystics almost always humbly keep the knowledge of their unique experiences to themselves. In fact, they are likely to be embarrassed of having been given these extraordinary gifts, because they realize that they are unworthy of such gifts. St. Teresa of Avila comes to mind here. In her spiritual classic, The Interior Castle, St. Teresa described the gift of transforming union as though the experiences that she extensively detailed were the experiences of someone else, when in reality she was describing her own experiences. In addition to being a gifted mystic, this great saint was also a theologian of contemplative prayer. One caution should be added on this fascinating subject. The particular caution is this. You shouldn't seek to have or desire to have extraordinary mystical experiences. Examples of extraordinary mystical experiences are bilocation, levitation, visions, ecstatic states, stigmata, etc. There are a few reasons as to why a desire for extraordinary gifts can potentially be a spiritual danger. One reason that desiring such exceptional experiences and gifts is dangerous is because such a desire may well be an indication that one is suffering from or tempted towards spiritual pride. The humble soul believes that they are nothing and that without God they are less than dirt. Another reason that such desires are potentially dangerous is because they may indicate a hazardous curiosity. The devil will attempt to exploit such misguided desires, whether they stem from his favorite sin, the sin of pride, or if they stem from curiosity. The devil is more than happy to grant his prey an extraordinary experience, that is, if God permits him to provide such an experience. The evil one can present himself as an angel of light. He and the fallen angels can more or less replicate mystical experiences, and if these false revelations bring you further from God, then his diabolical work would be a sinister success. St. John of the Cross, another doctor of the church and mystic, frequently warns of such dangers in his extensive works. At this point, you may be thinking to yourself, man, this guy is a real killjoy. He makes a video on mysticism and then tells us that true mystics are really rare and that wanting to have extraordinary mystical experiences is bad. What gives? What good is mysticism and why should I care about it? If you are thinking along those lines, I get it. However, we're now getting to the best part. You should care about authentic Christian mystics and mysticism for the same reasons that I do. I'm not a theologian nor a mystic, but I not only enjoy studying these heavenly subjects, but I have tremendously benefited from doing so. If you're listening to this video, then you almost certainly love God and you want to know him better. Studying orthodox right belief theology and mysticism are excellent ways to learn to know God better. The more that we know the Lord, the better we will be able to love him as we ought. 
Our whole purpose of existing in living is to know, love, and serve He who created us. Practicing mental prayer and meditating upon the mysteries of the Holy Rosary are healthy practices which aim us towards growing more united with God. Human death is defined as the separation of the soul from the body. I've argued that in a mystical sense, theology and mysticism seem to be joined in a similar manner. Therefore, it would seem that when theology and mysticism are permanently separated from each other, that a type of mystical death can be said to have occurred. A purely mechanical theology that is devoid of a living relationship with God is sterile. So too, a mysticism that isn't grounded by theology risks becoming disordered. St. John the Evangelist, St. Paul the Apostle, St. Thomas Aquinas, and St. Bonaventure were genius theologians and great mystics, blessed with extraordinary gifts. Giving glory to God is what ultimately matters. It is to this end that these blessed saints embody the fruits of a wedding between theology and mysticism, as their lives transformed into a glorification of Almighty God. Studying and meditating upon the genuine revelations and insights given to the select few church-approved mystics is like riding the wings of an eagle as they soar up to the highest heavens. The church mystics are eagles, and we are their privileged passengers. Reading the mysterious, magnetic, and magnificent works of these master mystics is akin to eating heavenly fruit. You are what you eat, is a common saying. And in this case, he who feeds his heart, mind, and soul with these heavenly words and images is himself more likely to produce good fruit. Enter through the hallowed doors of Catholic tradition to find the rich treasures of the Catholic faith. Seek the golden pillars of mysticism and theology. Practice mental prayer while using the writings of church mystics as your guide and allow the wings of mysticism to soar above and beyond the spirit of the world. Thank you for watching my video, and I invite you to check out the Virgo Potens website at virgopotens.org, and I also invite you to subscribe to this Virgo Potens YouTube channel. Thank you, and may the Virgin Most Powerful guide and protect you.